Tales of UFO abduction, psychic power, and other extraordinary claims captivate our imagination, but sometimes the line between science and faith can be dangerously blurred. Michael Shermer is fan of Skeptic Society and Skeptic Magazine. His new book, Why People Believe Weird Things, examines the lure of the unknown and challenges the realm of superstition and the supernatural, and we're pleased to have him on this broadcast. I, uh, here is the book, and here is the magazine, and there is a tribute to Carl Sagan, who was on the board. What, what did he do? He's, uh, what was the relationship with he, Sagan? He's just the sort of intellectual fountainhead of the whole skeptical right. movement. Uh, so he had no, thinker, no official association. He, oh, yes, he did. Sure, yeah. he endorsed the magazine, and uh, a friend and colleague, yeah. and... Uh, you know, great loss to the skeptical community because he transmitted uh, what science was all about better than anyone. What's the skeptical community? Well, <laughs> there is one. There is a movement. It's mostly scientists, uh, intellectually People curious folks, magazine, scholars. Yeah. Uh, anybody can join the Skeptic Society. We put on a monthly yeah. lecture series at Caltech. Every month is a different subject, whether it's UFOs and alien abductions right. or psychic power or whatever. Every issue of Skeptic Magazine has a different theme, like this one that is a tribute to Sagan, actually has a, a theme on can history be a science, right. dealing with pseudo-history pseudo and this sort of thing. Uh, we did one uh, after this on the environment. To what extent uh, is science politicized? I mean, you have left-wing scientists arguing for the data to... Uh, say that there's a greenhouse effect. You have right-wing scientists that say there is no greenhouse effect. What is the public to make exactly. of when you have experts on both sides who claim they have the data? Clearly, science is a social process. The data don't just speak for themselves. So one of the things we're interested in skeptics, one of the things that my book is about is belief systems and how they dictate perceptions of the world. If you have a conspiracy theory uh, and you think the Jews are running the world, then every time you read a newspaper article about uh, so-and-so hired at the bank, aha, it you see, it, it begins to fit. Yeah. If that's not your conspiracy theory, if it's the New World Order and uh, Clinton is taking us down this road where the United Nations is going to take Every over the United States. Every time you point somebody States. in the yeah. Foreign Relations, exactly. they say, aha, uh -huh. who's my right, point? Right. Never mind that the, you know, the UN can't solve a, a third world skirmish, let alone take over America, but this is minor details to the conspiratorialist who merely has to find the data to fit his theory. How do you determine when it's reasonable to be skeptical and when it's reasonable to be a true believer? That's the rub. Where do you go between untrammeled credulity and dogmatic skepticism, neither one of which is healthy? Skeptic is just the name of a magazine. It's really science. And uh, science has a mechanism for helping us find the balance between those two. And the mechanism is asking for evidence, uh, looking to see what the new idea, how it fits into our previous worldviews. Is it consistent? Is it inconsistent? Uh, how, how well does the evidence fit with that theory versus a bunch of other theories? Is there a convergence of the evidence toward one conclusion. So, for example, the creationists ask us for one transitional fossil. Give us one transitional fossil that proves evolution. Problem is evolution is not proved through one fossil. It's proved right. through a convergence of different fields to this conclusion. Holocaust deniers, uh, the same thing. You know, show me one testimony from, you know, somebody that says the Holocaust happened. Well, that, that's not how history is constructed. It's like a puzzle that's put together from various sources. Well, there are a lot sources. of testimonies that the Holocaust happened. I don't understand what you mean. Well, what they mean is that, uh, prove to me that, that uh, the Nazis intended to eradicate European Jewry. Find me a, a letter from Hitler in which he says this. Well, there is no letter, single letter in which he says this. You have to piece it together from speeches and documents and memos and letters and so on. And uh, so what I do in the book when I debunk the Holocaust deniers is show not only why they're wrong point by point, but also how we know anything in history happens. Um, that's the problem with revisionist history, is that sometimes it goes too far where it's driven by ideology rather than evidence. Why is it that these things have such appeal? Well, that's the big question. The last chapter of my book is why do people believe weird things? I, I, I run through a number of them. Hope springs eternal for the future. For whatever reason, humans have a large enough brain to be able to project ourselves into a different future. The grass is always greener on the other side. Somehow what we have here is not good enough, and we can have it some better somewhere else. This is the wellspring of cults of all religions, of course, is a hope for a better tomorrow, a promise for a better future uh, in eternity, and uh, I, I think there's a there's a human need for that. Um, a human more, need for believing that there's some yeah something higher, some spiritual other kind of world other than the physical here and now. Well, all but, cultures, but all religions uh, believe that. Don't they? Absolutely right. So so therefore, are you skeptical about all religions I, because it's not scientifically based? I'm not. Um, I'm skeptical in, in this sense that. Um, when you ask the question, is the Bible true or false, 
this is to me the, the wrong question to ask. It's not a book of science and history. It's a book of literature. It's a book of morals and moral homilies. It, it's one of the great works of Western literature, which is what drives me nuts when books like the Bible Code come out and they say, look, we can prove through science that this is the one true right uh, code of text dictated by God and so on. Baloney, come on. What, you know, my answer to this is, oh, ye of little faith. Mm. I mean, the purpose of religion is faith, not to be exactly. proven by now, science. Now, is